So we're going to make a, a drawing of the actuator base. And we started with our template. And notice that we already had our name in here. We already had our section number in one of one. Um, we did put in our first note that says interpret this drawing in accordance with ASME Y14-5-2009. So that holds us to a contract that way. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in my title block. And I do this by habit. First thing we're going to have is initial release. I-N-I-T-I-A-L. And I'm going to put today's date. And I'm lock on 12. Okay. 19th? Really? I love it. It's closer to payday. Okay. So we're going to say okay on that one. And down here, in, o in order to fill in my title block, I'm going to double click on field text. And my title is going to be base, comma, actuator. Base is the noun. Actuator is the adjective. Does that make sense? So you'll have lots of plates, comma, base, comma. All right, the scale. The scale is going to depend on what scale I put down in here. And I'm going to try one to one. So I'm going to, that's going to depend on what the scale of my views are that I put in here. And 12. You can put 1 colon 1, 1 x, 1 equal 1. They're all the same. Or 1 over 1, actually. Yes. Um, the next thing is I'm going to start bringing in some views. So I'm going to start with my base view. If I already had my part open, it would know to pull that part up, but I don't have it open, so I'm going to go ahead and select it. I got lucky with that orientation. Uh, I'm going to leave that one to one, and I do want to show hidden lines here. I don't want it to be shaded. I don't want to show hidden lines removed. I don't need a view identifier, so I'm not going to turn my light bulb on here, and I don't need to reorient it. If I needed to, I'm going to hit this button. It's going to throw me into the part. I move it to whatever view I want and say OK. I'm going to move it back to the top and say Finish Custom View. And I'm going to set this one down. And now I'm going to get a projection view here and a projection view here. Now it just keeps want to, wanting to make more views. So anytime that it wants to do that in Inventor, you're going to right click and say Create or Continue. That stops it from all this perpetual view making. All right, and notice that they're all staying in line. As I move my base view around, everything else is moving accordingly. So now I'm going to select all three of these views, holding down control to gather them. And that's the same in a lot of softwares. Notice that I have some dotted lines around all three views. And now I'm going to right click and say what I want to do with that. I'm going to say automated center lines. Since we set up our document settings, to already to default for a circular pattern, our axial center lines, a revolved feature, a cylinder, and holes. I'm just going to say OK. And it popped all my center lines in for me already. Got, got this all lined up. I don't need any dimension left or right here. I have this, but it didn't show me that this is, it should have extended this line out further than this. The reason that it didn't do that is I said, don't do all my fillets. I don't want just quarter rounds with center lines all over the place. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put one in. So I'm going to go to annotation and here are your center, center lines. I'm going to put a target center line in here and it extended only those three sides out because I know that the bottom of this full round is not rounded. And that's smart enough to know that. Same thing happens here. Anytime you have a full round somewhere else, you're going to have an axial center line in the adjacent view. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to put some dimensions in. And I'm going to start with, let's just start with this side view. So I'm going to select the view and right click. And I can say retrieve dimensions. And it's actually going to pull them from the part. So if I put design intent into my dimensions, I can just pull the dimensions that I want. Now watch this. It's going to show me every one that pertains to this. Do I need that one? No. Um, 
I need this fillet because it's in the profile of that and I'm going to put another fillet up here. So I'm going to split those four fillets up into two views. So I'm going to select this one. Notice that it's only two places in my dimension. Um, I need this one. And what else? I needed the thickness. I need this. I'm going to get my radius in a minute. I put a full round on that and I actually made this 1.5. So I'm actually going to put that dimension in there. Right? I'm going to apply those. And now I'm going to select this view. And I'm going to select dimensions again. So I'm going to say 0.38. And I can say 2x on this, right? And was there another dimension that went in between here? It was three dimensions that stacked, wasn't it? I have to have this one. I need this one. I don't want the dimensions of the drill and everything from the hole. I don't want that. So I'm going to use something else for this one. I'm going to use uh, this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. And I'm going to say apply. And what, can, what am I going to use this one for? Gotcha. All right, let's say cancel right now. So I'm going to pull out my input which is right here, sorry, so it's right here, and I'm going to make sure that I have every dimension on my drawing that I have on my input. So I'm going to go ahead, and if you want to drag these, if you drag this around here, it's not going to do anything. If you drag this dot right here, you notice that it wants to go crazy. Just play with it a little bit. There it is. All right, I've got the one. I'd like for that not to be in the body of my part, so I'm going to pull this out to the end of the uh, center line. Notice that whenever you retrieve dimensions, it doesn't have your offset from origin. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab it and I'm going to drag it so that I get my offset from origin. And bring this over here. What if I wanted this to go all the way across that circle? I'm going to right click and go to options. And it says arrowheads inside or single dimension line. How about that? Yeah. And then I'm going to bring this one over, do the same thing on this one. Let's do this one at a 45 degree to that. Right click, options, single dimension line. And I've got this hole, I've got this. Could I move this to this view? Yeah. Let's see if it'll move dimension and move it over here. It'll pop it from one view to the other. And now sometimes you have to dig in to the middle of the dimension to move the whole dimension itself. And I'm going to drag these to the endpoint so I have my offset from origin. And now I'm going to put in another dimension. Because I mirrored these, I don't have this center dimension in here. If I want to align this up, all I have to do is hover over the next dimension and it'll line itself up. If I want to edit this dimension, I'm going to double click it. I'm going to go to Home button. Notice that this is a parameter that you created the part with. So it doesn't have a, a dimension there for you to fiddle with. You can override it, but you never want to do that. Use the integrity of the part. I'm going to put a 2x in front of this. Yes. And actually, I'm going to do them all at the same time. So I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this kind of in a, in a different format. I'm going to drag all these ends. I know this is boring to watch. This is, these are one point off every time you forget to do that. And I'm going to grab this one, and it's going to try and flip out on me, and I'm just going to tinker with it until I get that right. This is 2x, home. If you hit the home button, it'll go right before that, 2x space, home, 2x space. And that's 3.5, that's 1, this is 0.5. Is this a 2x? Home, 2x space. I'm double clicking it. Mm -hmm. And now I need some dimensions here, right? So I'm going to put in some dimensions. So I didn't create it that way. I'm going to put in that dimension. And is that a 2x? So I'm going to hit home. Now notice this little button right here edit dimension when created. Very nice. It automatically brings it up to edit. If you don't have that checked, you won't have this. You'll have to go back and double click it again. So I'm going to hit the home button, 2x space, because we're going to inspect the height of both those holes. I'm going to put this dimension in here. It already knows it's a radius. Click, 
home to X space. Home is on your key. It's right above uh, and to the right of delete. See, it goes to the home, so it goes to the very start of all your text. Likewise, you have end, and that will go to the end of your text. All right. What else are we missing here? Got that. Got that. Now, we have a diameter here. We actually have almost a full circle here. This is actually a cylindrical feature, you guys. So where do we d dimension a cylinder? Side view. Excellent. So I'm going to use this linear dimension right here and right here. I'm going to pull it out here. And I'm going to go to home. And I'm going to put a symbol in there. Because it's a linear dimension. It doesn't know that it's circular. So I, gotta put a, I have to remember to put a diameter in. All right. What else are we missing, you guys? Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So hole and thread notes. Hole and thread notes. Every time you have a hole, this is why that hole and thread notes is better than just putting in a dumb dimension. Hole and thread notes will put in your thread, your thread, your, all your tap information. And if you have a blind depth, it knows to go ahead and put that in there. If you put, if it goes through all, it will say through. And it's not necessary. We know that any time that it doesn't say a depth, it's assumed to go all the way through the part. So I'm going to select on that. I'm going to select the visible line, not the hidden line of the thread. We don't dimension to hidden features. And I'm going to pull this out here. And now I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to double click on that. And notice that this is grayed out. Um, edit whole quantity note. I have never had this work. We can try it. And we can say six here. Number of holes in the pat. I don't know. Put it where? I think this is a parameter, though. I have never, I've never had that work. So what I do is take off use default. I go to home. Put six x in space and say okay all right so I know how far these holes are out from the center of this how far are they apart here what's the angle we don't have that on our drawing yes one or two ways we talked about the other day you either say how many times you have so many degrees or you say equally spaced all right so I'm going to double click on this Hit enter and put in equally spaced. Say okay. That covers us on that one. We got that. We got the hole. We have the, our whole pattern. We have our diameter. Um, this one. Got that one over here because it's a cylinder. All right. Does that look? Our datums. Yes. Let me, before I get too far away from our dimensions, I need to change the precision of some dimensions. So on your input, pull it out, and I want you to, I want you to circle every one that's three places instead of two places. So I have 2.125. And I'm going to select that one. I'm going to hold down Control, and I'm going to select the thickness here. And I'm going to select the thickness here. And I'm going to select the height of this one. And both of our fillets. And is that it? Looks pretty good. Now I'm going to right click. And I'm going to precision. And I click three places. They all change at the same time. We like doing that. We like things to change at the same time. I do anyway. Yes, I select this. I hold down control. So if I just click on one and then click on another one, you have to hold control together. Now let's say that all of my dimensions need to be three places. I can right click on this and say edit dimension style. It goes right back into the dimension style that we set up and you can change it to be three places only in this drawing. Because you're going to save this as actuator base. Okay. So now we need some feature control frame things. We need some datums, right? And these are symbols. So you see that double down key? I'm going to hit that and I'm going to put a datum in. I'm going to zoom down here and this is something that we haven't talked about. 
I don't really like it to have a, a knee like that, like a leg. I like it to be kind of straight. But the other thing that we didn't talk about is that whenever you put a feature control frame in, you need to put it in the profile of that surface, not pointing down to the surface. So likewise, I'm going to put a feature control, uh -oh, feature control frame here, which is here. I'm going to point to this surface. I'm going to pull it out. Continue. Symbol is parallel. My tolerance, 0 0.005. And the datum that it's relative to is A. You see how to do it? Again, feature control frame. Click on the surface. Pull it out. Right click and continue. It keeps wanting to make more legs, more bins. Parallel, 0 0.005. We said we didn't want leading zero, so it shouldn't put it in there for us. In relation to data make. The next one is we have something that's going to be attached to this dimension. I want it to travel with that dimension. You see that little green dot? I'm going to click on that green dot. Now, I don't want an arrow here. So if you click twice, you make a line, right? I'm not going to click twice. I'm going to hit enter. Then it doesn't put a leader. Now I'm going to put this one is parallel. And remember, don't forget that this is a cylindrical tolerance zone. Put a diameter in. 0 0.03 in relation to datum A. And say OK. Does that make sense to you guys? All right, the last thing I got to do, I got to go down here and change my material. It says cast aluminum. And say OK. And now I'm going to file, save as, actuator, base, drawing. And that saves it as an IDW. Knows it's a drawing. And save. So it won't save over your part. Make sense? Yeah, let's put in the isometric drawing. So the the next one we're going to do is a base. Should be open, but it's not. Actuator base. And I'm going to go to orientation. I'm going to try an isometric view. Doesn't look too good to me. I don't like that. So I'm going to use shift in my middle, holding down my middle mouse button and get it in there. It's kind of what I want to see. And I'm going to click this corner. And that will make it perfect for me. We go. I'm going to finish the custom view. It's too big. So I'm going to put my scale down to one half. Anytime the scale is different than down here, I have to put my scale label on. Remember that? Anytime the scale is different. So I'm going to go here. I don't really need a view name. And I want this scale text to be 0.125. All right. And that looks okay, but I'd rather have this shaded. So I'm going to move this scale right up here. And I click on the view and right click. And it lets me edit the view. I'm going to make it shaded, no hidden lines. And say okay. Um, no, I brought this in at one to one. So everything, unless otherwise specified, is one to one. This is otherwise specified. So that allows me to not have to put the scale of all these others. Does that make sense?